What's good, Washington fans? It's your boy Stax Reacts, and we back again with another video. Uh, another devastating loss today against the Philadelphia Eagles. Honestly, man, I'm gonna be real with y'all. Like, um, I didn't feel comfortable about this game anyway going into it. Um, I feel like I felt like it was going to go exactly how it went the first game. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like and we, it did go exactly how it went the first time. I feel like we started off hot, like we did the first game. And when it comes to the second half, we just couldn't make the plays that needed to be played. And I can really go, I'm, I'm going to go kind of deep into detail today because I want y'all to really understand what we got going on here in Washington. Because it's not really, to me personally, it's not even about, it's not even about like the players. It's not, a, it's, it's a mixture of a lot of different things that's going on with this team. And I really feel like, we really, really have to talk about this. So with y'all, with that being said, I need y'all to really pay attention. And I'm going to break down a lot of things that's going on with this game today. So I need y'all to pay attention. First things first, we're going, I'm going to just start with the good things. Because it's always good to talk about the good news instead of the bad news. So the first things first, I feel like we both definitely have found ourselves a quarterback. Sam Howe threw for four touchdowns today. He threw for almost 400 yards. He had that costly interception that let the, uh, let the Eagles win the game. But he's he's played pretty well against the Philadelphia Eagles. Like just, you know what I mean? And it's it's crazy that when we play these teams like this, he can always rise to the occasion. He always rises to the occasion, and our team usually rises to the occasion when we play good teams. But we play bad teams, we always play down to the competition. I'm not sure why that keeps happening over and over again. But it is what it is. But like I saw, so I said, like, like I said. Sam Howe has played good. I don't think we need to go drafting the quarterback next year in the draft and everything like that. I, we have one in the house, and I feel like the more he grows, the more the more he like he learns to play, the more he learns the scheme, the better he's going to become. And uh, I like what we have at quarterback, and I feel that we have things going forward. I love how our receiving core is actually starting to come around. Like, you know, Jamison Crowder made a signing today. Jamison Crowder, man, we should have never let him go in the first place. So Jamison Crowder made a sign today. Jahan Dotson finally came out of his shell. Jahan Dotson made some plays and came out of his shell, and he had over 100 yards uh, receiving today. Terry McLaurin had a touchdown today. Now, he had two big drops, but like I said, we're talking about the good right now. He had two big drops, but he most definitely had a touchdown too. And uh, like I said, no Curtis Samuel signing, but B-Rob, he made some, a lot of big runs. Antonio Gibson made some good catches. Like Logan Thomas made some good catches. Bates made some good catches. Offensive line. Offensive line only gave up one sack today, y'all. Just one. Offensive line only gave up one sack today against a good defensive front from the Philadelphia Eagles. Like I said, you know, Jalen Carter, Fletcher Cox, all them boys over there. Like they gave up only one sack today. Now it was a costly sack. It was only a it was a costly sack, but he only gave up one today. And all of that got changed just by switching out the center from from Gates to Tyler Larson. It's crazy how things change. Also. Also, the, the, the special teams was pretty good. Like, Joey Sly hit that 61-yarder to go into halftime. Like, I think – I really thought that was – like, you know, I thought that was a momentum builder. I really did. I really thought that was a momentum builder, and I really felt like it was going to be, like, what we needed to pretty much take us over the top and win this game. When we, we started playing this game and we started – we came out and we went down the field, scored, go down the field, score again. I'm like, um, I, like I said, it was only the first quarter, so I wasn't uh, – too too like excited but i was happy but i but like i said nfl game is four quarters it, that's how it's going to be and we didn't we didn't make all the plays that we needed to be made we were up 14 to 3 uh we made that just dumb boneheaded fourth quarter call or fourth down call that just that just blew my mind like that that fourth that fourth down call blew my mind i mean blew my mind bro like my thing is it's fourth and one, and you telling me you can't just run the ball? Why are you doing motions and trying to do get cute with the with, with passing on fourth and one? Like we're gonna go into that too, y'all. We're gonna go into that too. But like I said, special teams, special teams, I give an A. Uh, offense, I give about a B plus because there's, there was a play that needed to be made. The thing that really got me the most, bro, is really. The defense, the defense, I give an F because there's no reason that your offense should score 31 points and you lose the game. That right there has really got me blown. That right there has me in a whole different type of realm. Like I'm like I I can't fathom it. Like I, it's really hard for me to put put it together. So. OK, y'all. 
Now let's get that. Now let's get into what y'all really wanted to hear. Let's get into the nitty gritty of this. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be y'all, I'm gonna be 100 percent with y'all. And I want y'all to listen. I feel that this game was fixed, and I feel like it was it was all fixed for the Eagles, like from the start. Like you gotta realize, man. I don't know if the refs hate us, bro. I don't know if the refs hate us. I don't know if the refs just don't like us as an organization. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know what it is. And I don't know what it's going to be. But it's like, y'all got to come on. You know, from the, the catch that Jahan made, he made the catch. They said it was an incomplete pass. He made the catch. The ball never hit the ground. It never hit the ground. We throw the challenge flag. They said it was incomplete, but the ball never hit the ground. Crazy, right? Second call. Second call. They said that that uh, they said that uh, Benjamin St. Juice had a, a pass interference on AJ Brown when all he did was hit the guy in the hand. He tapped his hand and they was fighting for the ball and they called it pass interference and they put him at the, they put him at the one yard line. Like, come on, like what are y'all doing? And then another then another call with Brian Robinson when he's running the ball out to the to the uh, left side on the handoff. They call it back saying Logan Thomas. Was 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 in the wrong position or something like that. I'm just like, what are y'all doing? Like, what is the referees doing here? Like, what are they doing? At one point, bro, at one point, the Philadelphia Eagles only had like two penalties, bro, for 10 yards. And Washington was at like five or six for over 60 yards. And I'm sitting there, I'm just like, I'm looking at these plays, and I'm sitting, I'm looking at the way these referees are calling this game. And I'm sitting there like, yo, you gotta be serious. You gotta be, you can't be serious about what's going on. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you cannot – the game should never – the game should never come down to the referees. We had we had so many opportunities. We had so many opportunities to win this game. Like, there was no reason. Like I said, even when – even when they were trying to do the, uh, the, the the Philly special, the push touch, the booty, the booty push, whatever y'all want to call it, we stopped it. They fumbled. We stopped it. Like, we wanted the first and only teams in the league to stop their play. They fumbled the ball. We got the ball back, and we gave it right back to them. Like, you got to understand, y'all, we have to do better. That's the difference between good teams, and that's the difference between great teams. Like, you know, when you play teams like Philadelphia, they're not going to make the, the mental and the, and, the, and the mistakes that we that we continue to make over and over and over again. Like, they're not going to do it, and that's just the way it is. They're not going to do that. And when they got the ball, they made the plays that they needed to make, and they – ultimately won the game the defense the defense did absolutely nothing I mean honestly like the D-line got no pressure like all those first round picks like Sweat John Allen Deron Payne Chase Young like Jamin Davis like we even tried to blitz and we couldn't even get in on the blitz like we were sending five six guys still couldn't get in on the blitz and I can understand okay I can understand the Eagles have one probably the best offensive line in football I get it I understand I get it bro but you're telling me you can't get no pressure with six guys, bro. Like you can't get no pressure at all. You got all these guys, all these first round talents, all these first round talents. Chase drafted number two. Like you got Jonathan Allen drafted in the top 10. You got Deron Payne drafted in the top 12. You have Montez Sweat drafted number 28 in the first draft, in the, in the draft. Like you got all these guys, bro. And there's nobody getting home. We, they gave up 38 points. Now, is a lot of that on coaching? Yes, a lot of that most definitely is on coaching. But you got to realize the coach doesn't go out there and play these games. He doesn't play these games. The coaches tell you what to do as a scheme, and you go out there, you make it happen. Like there's a lot of times when you see players like a TJ Watt, you see players like a Michael Parsons, sometimes they notice things and they just freestyle and they make it happen. Our players just are not getting pressure. They're just not getting to the ball. And it doesn't matter – how bad the offensive line is. It doesn't matter how good the offensive line is. We're just not getting pressure. We're just not. And then that goes to the next situation. That's exactly why they're talking about trading Montez Sweat or Chase Young probably before the trade deadline uh, next week on October 30th. And honestly, at, at this point, at this point that I'm at right now, I could see I don't care who goes because you, you have a defense that's ranked 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st in almost every statistical category. That's showing that something's not right. That's some, that shows that's something not right. Even if your team is horrible, if you're an impact player, you're going to make an impact on the team. Like, it doesn't matter if your team is 0-5, 1-3, 1-2. There, there's going to be that one player that you have to stop. And when it comes to Washington, when it comes to Washington, do you? I can't, me personally, I cannot pick 
a player on Washington's defense where they be like, you got to stop this guy. You this is, this is the guy you have to game plan against. If you don't stop this guy, it's over with. We don't have any of those players. And, it, and it's surprising that we don't, knowing that we took all these players in the first round. Like, it's just – it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So it, it doesn't make sense. Point number two, why do they keep putting – Emmanuel Forbes on A.J. Brown. You clearly see this guy. Look, I'm an Emmanuel Forbes fan. When we when we drafted when we drafted Emmanuel Forbes, I was the one screaming and jumping for joy and getting excited. So I'm not going to sit here and talk bad about the guy. But what I'm saying is, you're putting like you're putting instead of putting him on A.J. Brown when it's like maybe when the Eagles are at their 20 yard line or the 30 yard line. They put a manual force on AJ Brown when we're by the end zone, knowing that they're going to throw it to this man. You know what I mean? You put your bigger corner St. Juice on him when it's the, when it's a small amount of space to cover. You want your 6263 corner to be on 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 their best receiver. Why are you putting a manual force at 150 pounds on AJ Brown knowing what he did the last game? Like that's not going to do anything but break that man's uh spirit. Like he's already down, he's already hurt from last time. They benched him, they bring him in, he gets cooked again. Like that is that's not going to do anything. And the problem is, bro, it's coaching. He's not coached up correctly. They're not giving him the help that he needs. They're not giving him, uh, you know, like I said, you see a guy's getting beat, you got to give him some help over the top. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just what it is. And honestly, I feel like Jack Del Rio, who also needs to be fired, Jack Del Rio needs to go as well. He's not putting these players in the position to win. He's just not putting them in the position to win. And when they're not being put into this position to win, they're going to continue to struggle. It's 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 just what it is. It's just what it is. And I can sit here and rant and, and, and scream and cuss about every single thing that we're talking about. But at the end of the day, bro, it, it's all about the coaching and the players go hand in hand. And then it's, it, there's there's a there's a, a influx and balance in, on both of those teams. Like on both of those things, like the coach is not good. The players aren't playing good. So that means the coaches aren't responding to the coaching. And then the coach is clearly not responding to how the players are. So if there's something, if there's a disconnect, if there's a disconnect in between there, something has to be changed. And I'm going to keep saying it once and once again, Ron Rivera needs to be fired. Jack Del Rio needs to be fired. Eric bien can go as well. Eric bien dropped Sam Howe back 52 times. 50 two times like come on bro like come on all i'm saying is you see when you gave brian robinson the ball he was breaking like yeah he got stopped a few times but he was breaking five yard runs eight yard runs ten yard runs like he was breaking these runs over and over again and there was no chris rodriguez siding what are you drafting for you're not playing them. what are you drafting these guys for you're not playing them. like what are you doing you know what i'm saying and when, when they get gifts in the ball they gave it to him in space which i liked but they didn't give it to him enough. So I'm sitting there. You got Sam Howe dropping back 52 times. And I'm surprised. Like I said, I'm happy he only threw one pick because after 51 times or 52 times of dropbacks, like you're going to make a mistake after all those dropbacks. It's just, it's just bound to happen. It's just bound to happen. Uh, second, third point, third point. Ron Rivera needs to go. Ron Rivera needs to be fired uh, just for the main, just, 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 just for the main thing that, he said that he didn't see the catch from Devontae Smith. Like, he said he didn't throw the challenge flag for Devontae Smith. The, play, the pass was incomplete. My thing is this. If you see a player, if you see a player catch a ball, the, the offense is not going to do a super, super fast no huddle running up to the line if that player caught that ball. And for you to be a head coach, you have to make that decision. I'm going to throw this flag anyway. I'm going to throw it or at the minimum, at least take a timeout so you can get a second look at it. He says he didn't see the play. Nobody from the up top in the offices or the booth said they saw the play. But if you watch the game, the whole all the fans, everybody on the sidelines was saying it was incomplete. It wasn't it wasn't a completed pass. They were we were all saying it. we were screaming at the TV. We were screaming at the coaches. The players on the sideline were screaming at Ron saying it's an incomplete pass. And he was literally standing there like a deer in headlights and he would not throw that challenge flag. And that that most definitely cost us because that ended up being a touchdown that we could have stopped. That was a fourth down play, y'all. You understand me? That was a fourth down play, y'all. It was a fourth down play. And that game, and that could have been most definitely been one of the scores off the board. And we could have been probably took a lead or did anything with that. You never know what could happen. But just seeing that happen over and over again, 
Like it's just little things like that. He just doesn't he, the, the time his time has passed. His time has passed. The game has passed him by him and Del Rio. The time has passed him by. And and until until we can realize this and nip this in the bud, it's going to continue to be this way. I don't expect Ron to be here. I don't expect Ron to be here after this game is over. I mean, I mean, after the season is over. I, I really think he should be fired in season, but I don't think our, our owners are going to do that. They're going to let it play out and handle everything on Black Tuesday. Um, and that's or, or and that's the season, and that's the day after the season's over. So we'll see how it goes, man. But like, but like I said, man, it's just it's it's just it's just terrible, bro. It's just terrible just to see us play down to our competition and then play up to competition and then continuously fall short over and over and over again. Like we lose to the Giants, we lose to the Bears, we play good against the Eagles, but we still can't do enough to win the game. And it's just like it's it gets to a point where you start to become numb to the stuff. You know what I mean? It's like 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 I said, I've been a Washington fan probably since like the early two thousands, and I and and I haven't seen a Super Bowl. I mean, I've seen a, a, a year with RG three stuff like that, but I haven't seen a Super Bowl. I haven't seen anything going on good with this team, and it's it's very difficult to root. And I understand why they kept saying that the game was taken over by the Eagles, and there was a lot of Eagle green in the stadium because you got to realize, bro, why do we want to continue to keep coming out to games and rooting for a team when this is going to be the product that they're going to put on the field? Let's just call it for what it is. Let's call it spade for spade. You know, if you're if you're going to continue to put out this BS, this this crap on the field over and over again, why do why would I even want to come but spend my hard earned money that I got from working to come watch this when I could just sit at home and watch it for free and be disappointed by myself? So it, it it's so hard to harp on. It's so hard to harp on what's going on with this team. Like it's like I really feel like the whole like I said last time, just blow it up. Blow it up. Blow the whole team up. Blow everything up. There's besides maybe a few people, maybe like Terry, John Allen, maybe Payne, um, how maybe Brian Robinson, bro. Everybody else is expendable. Everybody else is expendable. If they're sending if they're sending the right picks and they're sending the right picks our way, everybody can go. Everybody, bro. The defense is terrible. Defense is hot garbage. They're giving up like points by the dozens. They're giving up explosive plays by the dozens. Like it's ridiculous how many explosive plays that we're giving up. So we, we need to just blow it up and start fresh. Get get some get some new players and get some new coaches in that know what they're doing. Some some competent coaches. I don't mean just going out there just looking at the biggest name that's on the market and bringing them in. We really, really have to search and look for these coaches and see if their minds right see what their scheme is like let's see if they're really going to do what they say they're going to do and if that's not going to happen bro they need to stay gone we don't we this 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 franchise has been one of the most historic franchises in the nfl in the early 70s 80s and 90s like they were historic like washington was one of them teams that people feared coming into play every time rfk stadium will be rocking Everything like that. But now we go from a, a story off of the story team to a mediocrity dumpster fire. And it's going to continue to happen over and over again until we bring in competent players. We got rid of Daniel Schneider. He's gone. Josh Harris is here. Now it's time to clean the rest of the, the crap that Josh, that uh, Daniel Schneider bought in. And that starts with Ron Rivera and Jack Del Rio and Eric Bieniemy can go as well. And then we have to look in-house and see if we have something in-house that can we can evaluate to bring to this team and see if they're going to help us. Or we're going to have to really do a hard research and look at we can, what we can do to bring players into this team and coaches into this team that's going to turn us around for the better. Because it gets, it gets to a point where you're tired of being the laughing stock of an NFL team every year. Everybody looks at Washington as a get-right game. Everybody looks at Washington as another game on the schedule that they can get a win against. And we and that we and us being fans, bro, us being fans, we get to the points where we're used, we're so used to losing that it becomes no. And that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with this situation. I'm not going to get on here, scream, yell, rant, do everything that I usually do because it's get to the point where I'm just I'm just fed up with them. I'm I'm tired of it. I'm fed up. But like I said, I'm going to continue to be a fan of this team. I'm always going to be a continue to be a fan of this team. And that's exactly how it's going to be. So, like I said, watch the fans. Hold on. Change is coming. It, change is coming. And hopefully it's for the better. And um, if we get to this point, if we get to this point again, see the glory, so we can see the mountaintop. Hopefully, the, the, hopefully there are brighter skies ahead, y'all, because it's just not going, it's just not turning out nowhere close to what we thought we would have this season. Ron Rivera knew he had to have a successful season to save his job. 
And this is the this is the product that he puts out on the field. So with that being said, man, like I said, it's your boy Stacks Reacts, man. I appreciate y'all for listening to me. If y'all could like, subscribe, and comment down below. Uh, we have better days ahead, y'all. Better days ahead. But with that being said, it's your boy Stacks Reacts. I hope y'all have a good day. I am gone. Let's go.